We are the extremists. This is Silo Episode 3, The Machines, brought to you by Apple Plus. Brought to you by Apple Plus. Well, they they created it. They're not sponsored. Oh, us I thought yet. they were sponsoring us. Was, not oh, yet, wow. not yet. Hey, uh, quick reminder for those who uh, have actually tuned into Episode 3. We're on Patreon. Check out our Patreon page. You guys send us some love. We need it. I wouldn't say drastically, but, you know, it, it, it definitely does help. You know, I keep, I keep pitching the coffee because our coffee machine's broken, and I like to stay awake when we do these at night. We're rapid firing. So please, send us some support. Hey, if you can't do any money, no worries. Just click the like button. Click follow. Subscribe, I think, is the other Subscribe. one. Subscribe. Share with your friends, your family members, your dog walker. Um, you know, any kind of support helps. Dog right. walker, really obscure, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Anyways, all right, so episode three, before we get into it, Max, what has happened with you since we did episode two? <laughs> <laughs> since we just finished watching that. No, I, I mean, this episode had a lot of... Um, um, there was movement in the story. Yeah, the, what, what's that thing they say? The plot thickens, and you get some good information about the silo general. They keep putting, peppering in little information, like we find out how many people are in there. They're like about 10,000 people in there. That's a lot of people. Yeah. So they're, they're, you know, people are dying. People many, are born. That's why they have that tight restriction on how many babies you can have. Well, hold on a second. Or, did they, did yeah. they actually say how many floors there are? Do we know that answer? You know, I, I they might have said that. It might in actually stay in like at the bottom of the silo. We should try, I feel like it's like 160 or something. Maybe. You know, they, they, they probably did say something like we that. Should, we should figure out that math before the next episode. Cause if we can figure out how many floors there are, and if there's or roughly 10,000 people, it. you yeah. know, in the actual thing, how many people roughly average per floor? Because I feel like that that would be a lot of people per floor. And I don't think those floors are that big. 144 floors. All right. So there you go. 10,000 divided by 144. Go. You're on your computer. Do it. Is that again? 10,000 divided by 144. Oh, 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 oh. you want to see how many yeah, how people many, per floor? Yeah. Oh, and I'm sure... That you're gonna like some of the lower floors, you're gonna jam more people in. Sure, but as let's you just, go to the bottom, we're just looking for an average here. What sixty nine? What sixty nine? Sixty nine what? Sixty nine people. Sixty nine people. Yeah. Ten thousand divided by one hundred forty four. Yeah, sixty nine point a a bunch of you know whatever. So yeah, oh, okay, I guess that's a, yeah. So I guess, 70, I, 70 I can people see seventy per people per floor. floor. Okay, but I bet you the top floors they got bigger rooms. We saw we see. Well, well, you know, they got bigger rooms. Right. Because we've seen Holston's room. Granted, he was married. That It was two people living in a space. That room was much bigger than Juliet's room. Juliet's room was a little closet. It was just her. Right. So, you know, there's probably a, a balance there. Right. And then if you have families, you're going to have less people on top, more people on the bottom. But, yeah, 10,000 people, 144 floors. Wow. That's... Why does it take so long, though? I guess, cause, oh, you know what? Because it's a spiral. It's not a straight shot with the stairs to yeah, go. Yeah, it looks like it's like three spirals per yeah, or something. Before yeah. you get down. It's not like, you know, people you know, people do the stairs to, like, you know, the Empire State Building and things like that, you know? So but that's more of a straight shot. You're not coiling around. I guess so. Also, we don't know what, exactly what their food supply is like. You know, maybe they're moving a lot slower going up and down. Porters get more food because they're going mm. up and down all the time. But, you know. Yeah, people say, because in this episode, they talk about it's like a half a day or a day's journey for them. You know, yeah, to so they're go down. just go down there. So it's basically, it's a two-day journey uh, there and back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so in this episode, we get to see the journey of the mayor go all the way down to the bottom to kind of, you know, have her conversation with Juliet. And on the way, mm -hmm. she kind of makes some stops. Uh, one stop is she um, stops on a certain floor, I guess, where the babies are. Mm -hmm. Right? And so she... Uh, you know, you get to see her interact or interact with um, the common folk, the citizens, mm -hmm. and they all seem to love her, genuinely like appreciate yeah. her. And um, she has a nice little, uh, a nice little conversation, a little back and forth. But then after that, she goes and she talks to the doc, the, the delivery guy, the delivery doctor. I'm assuming of the entire silo, yeah, right? Because I don't think they have multiple floors mm -hmm. of a hospital. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out that this guy is Juliet's dad. Yeah, so she's really their main reason there. She's there to vet why Holston right. chose Juliet. Right. So who better to, 
you know, find some information about is the, your the father. One place she didn't go see, which was a big hubbub before yeah. she even gets to the doctor, was she passes judicial. Yeah, so she and does doesn't pass go judi- see yeah. the judge. She does, and or or see go in there at all. And all the, her little lackeys are like scouring and looking and right. You know, like, well, how are you come? You're not going to judicial. I'm confused. So before she leaves, she looks up and she sees like a bunch of you know she, judicial she, people. Yeah. So does do do I can't even say. Why can't judicial. Do they have the top floor? Like, are they like the main people on the very top of everything? And then as you go down lower, they got another floor where, where the judges and other people. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think you know the higher ups. You know, there's probably families that are more well to do or whatever have more so you important think they're jobs. On like, they're on numerous floors. Yeah, but okay. that is considered the top because they walk down and pass judicial. Right. You know. So. So that the top floor is not actually judicial. No, it could. It, I, it, I think there's multiple floors. There's a, it's it's broken down into sections because if you think about it, they say it's the top, the mids, and then the lows. Right. So, but mayor's tops, right? Huh? She's, she's in the top top. Well, a bunch of people are in the top. What they call consider the top. No, I'm talking about all right. So let's just say you broke down 144 floors and you mm-hmm. just basically broke them down evenly. Let's say yeah. on the on the top of the 144 floors. Let's just say. The top floor, number one. Oh, the number one? Who's on number one floor? Is that... They haven't showed anybody up there. They haven't said that. No. Okay. It could be anything. It could so be wait, housing. I'll... It could okay. be whatever. I was just assuming it was judicial because she was looking up and she saw those guys staring down at her. No, those are just, they're, you know, doing their rounds. Just doing guys. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. She, she... They haven't shown who's at the tippy top first floor. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. So anyways, so... She does decide not to make her rounds and stop at, stop with the mayor because she's a little upset because judicial, I said it, yeah, is kind of cramming down their option for who they want to be uh, the new sheriff. Yeah, and so, so that's, she, that's a good reason not yeah, to go visit. She doesn't appreciate that. Yeah. So she does. I think she does mention that later on when she, when uh, Common shows up with the with the fruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so she goes and she talks to Juliet's dad, and you come to find out that Juliet left when she was thirteen years old. 13 years old to go down to the bottom to be a mechanic because the mayor points out that it's weird for someone that was born in the mids to go and work down at the bottom. Yeah. And so he kind of gives his explanation of what happened. He thinks that because what happened with uh, her mom and her brother, it was very difficult for her. So, and she always liked figuring out how things worked, um, like mechanic or machines and stuff, how to uh, broken things, how to put them back together, that it was the perfect fit for her to go down there. So he supported it. Yeah, I got. I, I mean, that's a tough call. She's thirteen, and you're, you're going to send her down to the "quote unquote" horrible bottom, right? Do they all think it's horrible, or do they just don't know? Well, the way people treat each other is and, like, "Oh, you're yeah. a bottom feeder," or "You're," that's you true. know, that's that, true. It's a it's a class system yeah. kind of thing. And the mayor does say, and one of the other things is that she says it's weird that because her father's a doctor in the mids, yeah, that she ends up going down there. Yeah, you would have thought she would have become a doctor too, right? I guess so, but I, I mean. I kind of look at it, the body's kind of a mechanical machine anyways in some ways. That's a good point. So if you kind of take that idea and kind of apply that to machines and stuff, it kind yeah. of works out pretty well. Because you, you would think, you know, <laughs> you already joke about how bad the education system is here. Right. What better person to learn how to be a doctor is from a doctor, right? Right. You know, so you should teach your ch- your children right. to be a doctor. Right. But but it, it, it's good that she's, she's actually, Mayor Johns is actually seriously considering her by at least she's doing the due diligence and you know yeah so going to visit and then talking to the father yeah Jeez. yeah so one of the things i did miss though is that this uh, this episode does open up with juliet going on like on a drinking binge because <sighs> of, right. yeah because of the rope thing because remember the last she climbed episode, it she, she ended up climbing it she used my trick you know she used chuck norris's trick she just, it was like you know a little snake slither thing up <laughs> yeah, with the feet, right whatever. Up so but then she kind of just goes on a little dr- bit of a drinking binge when she gets back home um, apparently it was so bad that she was throwing up in the hallway. Um, that's what, at least what, uh, I can't remember the girl's name who wakes her up like the following day. Oh, um, we know on. her name. We do. She probably read this. Day, it's yeah. Shirley. Yeah. Shirley wakes her up, lets yeah. her know that she smells stuff in the hallway. <laughs> and apparently Jules is not known for being a drinker. Uh, but she took this as a. Yeah. Cause they didn't show her drink after she found out what's his name passed away. Right. Or did she? When they didn't found... show her, no, they didn't show her go all crazy like that. No, right? No, this was definitely something that I think it's a lot of buildup because obviously now that she thinks that the sheriff lied to her, she can't get to where uh, where he wanted to go, where, um, um, what's his name, wanted to go by the water. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the door. Yeah. So I think it's a lot of buildup for her, probably why she drank and stuff. So um, after that scene, she ends up down to the where the um, the generator is. Oh, because it's shaking. Because it's shaking. Like the whole, the whole bottom part's shaking. And so she's got to go down there and kind of fix it. And she's obviously a little bit uh, hungover. She's drunk. Yeah. And then she sees her shadow. Um, Cooper. Cooper. Cooper's trying to jump in there and fix it. She punches P- Cooper in the face and says, I'll take care of it. And she goes in there and does her thing, comes back and talks to the main lead guy. Knox. Knox. And uh, Knox tells her that she's basically on a timeout. Yeah, you know, you and figure she out stinks. Your, she, you're in a timeout, you stink. Uh, go do, uh, you know, some uh, charity work. It kind of seemed like she, that she got appointed chari- charity work by him or something. And she's in there yelling at the entire time, we need to fix this generator. It's going to break at some point. We need to shut it down yeah. and fix it. And he's saying he doesn't want to be the only lead mechanic in history to, to actually yeah. shut the silo down, to shut the, the generator down. She's saying it's better on our terms. And be on backup. And be on backup so that way they can fix it as opposed to the thing just blowing up completely and then you're in dark forever. So that yeah. this kind of sets up what's going to happen later on. I, that's why I don't want to rush back yeah, and talk important. about that because it's an important part. Because all this is kind of happening simultaneously while Johns and, and um, Deputy Marnes are walking down. Right. So the next stop... Which I believe is the next stop. Maybe I'm getting this mixed up. Eh, Stops at the garden. Yeah. They're they're having a picnic. They're having lunch. They're having lunch. <laughs> it's in kind of like their pre date before they share their true feelings with each other. And uh, um, Sims, my common, uh, yeah. he shows up and he delivers this nice, pretty strawberry shortcake style yeah. thing. It didn't look as good as the one you made. No, that thing looked delicious, we, man. No, no, the one you made was really good. Yeah, I went to your house. You made dinner, and then you come out with like a dozen of those things. I was like, it's just strawberry and sugar, man. You can't go wrong. <laughs> strawberry and sugar. So anyway, so he's delivering this uh, this dessert as kind of a nudge, peace offering, or yeah. kind of like threatened. Like she takes it as, a, as being threatened. Would you have, have taken it as a threat? Like he brings up a- uh, uh, some, some dude shows up out of nowhere wearing a cloak. But you with, know him. With a dessert. You know him though. But he doesn't look like he's the very like he's a very nice person just because he just the way he's uh, dressed, I don't know, man. There's something about that. Like I feel like it's Matrix style and we're gonna like he's like one of the agents or something. Oh, come on. He brought a nice dessert over to some elderly Would you've eaten it? people. Would you've eaten it? Damn right I would have ate After it. After you see what happens to her later. I would have ate it anyway. Listen. Uh, all right. Listen, one thing we learned from The Last of Us, strawberries are rare in a post-apocalyptic world. And they I'm, do not. And he said they just came fresh from the farm. Fresh from the farm. You know? So do you think They turned it down, and she's like, oh, it's bad for the heart. I so mean, do you think that he snuck in line somewhere to buy that really quick? Nah. On that floor? Or did he actually walk down he numerous floors? He brought it down. Floors? Yeah. He brought it down. Him? This is the good stuff. Can you picture him just walking down flights of steps? Dressed the way he's dressed with a strawberry shortcake in his yeah, hand. Yeah, I'd be like, and then he offered it to to Mars, and he turned it down. Yeah, what, what, what is it? The big black man can't give out some some sweets. I don't know, man. You show up. <laughs> I don't know, but I did think it was so. He he shows up to basically kind of, I guess, figure out why she didn't stop yeah. over at um the judges with the office. judges yeah. uh, judges office. And what's she, the judge? Meadows? Yeah, and she yeah. tells him the reason why is because I don't want these people being shoved down my throat as far as the pick who I should pick Billings. For, for sheriff. Yeah, sheriff And he Billings. gives it, he he pushes his case for why he should be and stuff, and it seems like a very reasonable choice yeah. to pick him. But there's obviously a lot of conflict that goes on between the mayor's office, the deputies, the sheriffs, and judicial. Because like, There's I, definitely I w- some gap there. I'm assuming she's worried that he's going to be like an informant, right? Everything that happens. Oh, totally. In, I right? would. Oh, yeah. I would. You I know? Would. So uh, it, she's justified by questioning. Sure. That's so much so that she's willing to, you know, humor Holston's pick of Juliet, who's a mechanic, to become the sheriff. Right. I think the 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 combination of those kind of that, because it's billings from judicial, is what really kind of helps give her the nudge to say, let's go at least see. That's the right. way I look at it. So if you look at it so far, she gets the letter. So if she, um, just because Holstead, um. Uh, I guess nominates her. That's mm-hmm. one vote for her, right? Yeah. Then you've got Marnes who says, "I don't think so. I wouldn't yeah. pick her." Then you've got um, who's all the, the judicial. The, well, the no. accountant guy. What's the accountant guy's name? The guy does the numbers. Oh, Tim Robbins. Tim Bernard. Bernard says no, right? Yeah. And then you've got uh, judicial that comes in and says no. However, she does stop and talk to the dad, who's a doctor. And I'm not saying he says yes, but he does 
point out that she is a very smart person. Yeah, he doesn't she, say no either. He doesn't say no, and then she does actually go through a tragedy in you know in the beginning that's of her why. life. But I think stuff. that's probably a point towards her right now. Yeah. So if you think about it right now, it's two to three in favor of picking Juliet. And the fact that she's good at fixing things and and yeah. the attention to details to fix things that's a good quality to have too. Well, I, yeah. So right. I mean, so I I so I think it's a two to three thing right now so far. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, so. As we go down, as, she, as the mayor finally gets to the bottom, is the perfect time <laughs> to actually have the generator do its thing again, right? Yeah. And Juliet, when the boss is coming, that's what everything goes to the boss hell. is coming. So now uh, the mayor gets to see Juliet in action. Yeah. And she, you know, in a way, saves the day for the moment. Yes. Right? But while Juliet goes inside the generator, the mayor decides to leave. The mayor goes and leaves, and she goes and talks to Juliet's friend, who ends up... Uh, being uh, the mayor's friend. Yeah. Um, Walker? Walker. Martha Walker. Like, Martha. W- when she sees Juliet there, you could see that she she realized Juliet commands the room because she told everybody, to, like, it, it was like, shut up and stop moving. And everybody down there was just like, stop so she could hear. They all know. respect her down there. For exactly. Sure. They so, respect her knowledge. And they so respect, there's some yeah. leadership there. Totally. You know? So she sees that. And then she goes and she, I mean, apparently Martha and the mayor seemed like they were pretty good friends. They, they haven't spoken in 20, 25 years because yeah. that's implied because uh, Walker's marriage of 20 or 25 years, yeah. I remember, uh, failed. To, her, to her wife, I guess, failed at some point. And so they haven't talked. I think she since said then. it failed 20 years ago. I think that's what she yeah, said, yeah. right? Yeah. She said something like that. That was yeah. 20 years ago yeah. or something like that. So at, during that conversation, it seems like she already made up her mind because yeah. of what Walker says to the mayor. We don't Which we don't see it. it. We, we don't, don't see, see it. it. Yeah. But it's definitely like. It's probably positive, it's, obviously. I'm like sure it's positive. Um, especially because of Juliet and uh, uh, Martha's relationship. It seems like it would be that way. So anyway, the next time she comes back in, Juliet comes up and she offers her the job. So now it's three to three. So think about it. You got three votes one way, three votes the other way. And I think because of what the mayor saw, yeah. what Juliet did in that room, that's the fourth vote. Yeah. So I think that right there is the deciding factor for her to offer Juliet the job. So yeah. she comes in and says, hey, uh, you know, uh, Holston, Holston recommended Holston you. recommends uh, you to be the next sheriff. And she's she, stunned. She's totally stunned. She flat out says no. She says that everybody says that their job is the most important in the silo, Good which point. her yeah. job actually is, and she's right because the most she, important job. She keeps the lights on. She keeps the power on. She keeps um, life support on because obviously there's a an air filtration thing going on to stop all the bo yeah. from going through. So <laughs> the BO. yeah, her job is actually the most important. She respects that decision and decides, okay. But she gives she gives um, Juliet Holston's badge because that was his his final request as well. It right, nominating her and giving the badge. Right, and on the way while when the uh, the mayor and the deputy leave, she decides to have a powwow with her friends down at the bottom, and she throws the sh- the sheriff um, badge over to the other deputy guy, Hank. Hank and Hank. For some reason, can't read. <laughs> so, but at the back, it says, "Oh, there's something back here." Yeah. And then we come to find out, you know, it's words later on at the end of the episode. At the end episode, because then you get to see another flashback of the. It's like the continu- last episode of last episode, but it's a continuation of a conversation that they were having. Yeah. Like if I like, and it's with um, I'm sorry, it's with Halstead and it's Juliet and Holston. Holston, and he says, you know, I will send word to you yeah. if I find anything. Yeah. And the word actually was on the back of yeah, was, the badge. Yeah, it was, it was truth. It was truth. Because she she said she screamed that to him. If you remember, she said, "If you listen to your wife, or what about the truth?" That 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 okay. whole argument that was that scene there. So yeah, so that was the sign that I guess she was waiting for. It took a year, right? You know? So before we jump, it continuing to say, why do you think it took so long for a whole citizen to sign? Do you think it took him that long to? Do you think he looked at the hard drive himself? Or who would he trust to look at the hard drive? Or what piece of information do you think he found that, you know, he would make it to, to one, go out there and clean. Right. Two, make her the sheriff. Because obviously by making her sheriff, he's trying to put her in a position to continue on, you know. The investigation. The investigation. Right. And, and and give the badge. It took a year. What 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 do you what what would you suspect happened in that that year? I mean, the hard drive definitely got to be one. You think must, she he, saw it. He, he must he have gone on the hard drive somehow. I would think that has to be it because it's a lot of information there that he's just sitting on mm-hmm. for at least a year. Yeah. So 
I can't imagine him just putting it in a bag somewhere and hiding it. But, you know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But I, I would think that, that you can, a, a normal person wouldn't be able to sit on that, especially if you're actually trying to figure out why your wife did what she did. Yeah, that and night, if you're actually trying to solve, a, a, yeah. solve this mystery of like why um, this person was supposedly committed suicide, but like his lover is saying no. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm not wording things very well on this episode of this podcast, no, but it's I fine. Think you're fine. I'm glad you're there to fill in the blanks. No, I think you're good. You're good. So, yeah. So, so she finally has, as she races back up to catch them on their way out, and she accepts the position. On one condition, though. Yes, the big condition for the uh, rest of the episode, yeah, the second half of the episode. It is. It's a, it's a good action part. Um, And she says, I'll take it one condition. I got to shut the the generator down mm -hmm. because it needs to be fixed. Yeah. I can't leave the bottom knowing that this generator is going to break. Like, if I'm going to go up there and work, we have to solve this now. And the only way for us to work on it is we shut the generator down. So they, I guess they come up with a, a plan. Yeah, to, from 10 to 8. Is it 10 to 8? 10 to 8 or 8 to 10? 10 yeah, to 8. It's 8 hours. Yeah. They get 8, eight hours. Yeah. 10 to 8? That would be longer than 8 hours, though, wouldn't it? They did say, they said it was shut down for 8 hours. Yeah, though. they did say 8 hours. So Maybe it's, been, it wouldn't have been 10 to 8. Well, what would it be then? They get eight hours. They get eight I hours. I know it's eight hours. So at n they're, they're preparing that night to to fix it while everybody is hopefully sleeping. And then in the morning, we've got power again. Right. And then they're, the deputies are, they or Deputy Marston, who's basically acting sheriff right now, comes yeah. up with, uh, he talks with all the other deputies on the radio and stuff and says, hey, be on the lookout. Yeah. So they're all going to be kind of like roaming the floor at night while the power's down to make sure that, you know, there's, I guess, rioting. There's nothing well, that's actually bad Well, they create safe zones for people to kind of like, you know, get together so people can feel safer right. from, you know, which people trying to do dirt with no power, you know? Yeah, which is by the camera, yeah. by, by the- In the cafeteria. In the cafeteria. So I think that's probably the most, the largest common area they can they can probably have I guess there, so, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, that makes sense. I, 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 I get it. I mean, but they, they, they are going to go on a- is it a backup generator, right, for a little while? There's a backup time? generator. But it's not as good. No, obviously. the backup generator, it's enough to run um, life support. They say that. Okay. And then it keeps some lighting on. And okay. That's, and that's okay. it. Okay. So it's bare minimum. Bare minimum. Okay. Yeah. So you see people start congregating, you know, in, in these spaces. And yeah. you see the deputies walking around. And um, Mayor Johns and Deputy Marnes are going to stay at that station I don't think they're back up top. They're, they're not. They're no. like probably maybe in the mids, maybe. Maybe they're at some kind of hub station for yeah, sure. Like yeah, I'm sure the there's mids. multiple hubs. If there's yeah. not many floors. Other deputy offices. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's a deputy per floor, because that would make sense. Or maybe there's like a, a deputy per assigned section? per like per well, section, maybe. Maybe like two to three floors, because there's a decent amount of deputies. You couldn't. You couldn't have like. Yeah. You think there's maybe there's like, a group of deputies for the lows, which include Hank, and I saw one other guy, and then right. maybe the mids is um. The, the the deputy that they were at her office because yeah it's deputy molly karens that's her name okay like she's the one that tells them about the cod and the pull out and things like that so and yeah. then the top deputy at the top is the sheriff's office right okay so let's assume there's three for right now that we'll makes sense that. right yeah, i guess that so yeah sense. it does yeah so 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 they're preparing for quote unquote the worst now meanwhile down in the the bottoms they're coming up with they're hashing out a really good plan actually from from the way they they, they did that scene i really appreciated it. like like you know how some yeah. shows they don't they just say we're just gonna do this but this one it was like you're in the meeting of them trying to figure out how coming up with the plan coming up with the plan and why this is not going to work well this will work and each person involved in the meeting you know has an expertise and contributes and really makes a plan sound solid right but i did like the fact that there is um some kind of a there's, this, there's still some kind of a mystery on how this thing's actually getting powered because there's steam that's provided to the generator that mm -hmm. they don't even know where that comes from. Well, you Juliet that? knows. Does she know that the steam, where that steam actually comes well, from? Well, the girl drew it. Um, what's her name? Um, Shirley drew, drew it. It comes down from we don't know where, you know. Right. Uh, uh, Juliet, uh, you know, well, you're questioning the, the, the silos education, should figure out it's, pro it's probably coming down from this water down here. Something's, you know, generating the steam to help with the turbine. But, right. But the plan they come up with, with that knocks, because what comes out, out of all their meeting is that they really only have a probably a 30-minute so window to kind of do everything. So they're going to open up the top of the, 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 the turbine while it's still running, see where the issue kind of is. Yep. Then they're going to shut it down. He's going to close off the steam 
and they're going to have to f- repair whatever they find probably within 30 minutes. The goal is 30 minutes, yeah. Yeah, because they're going to redline the steam. The pressure is going to be too much, and right. there'll be lights out for everybody forever. Right, right. I don't know if we have to do the play-by-play. No, exactly we don't have to, but it's just that's just the plan. Yeah. But what comes no, out talking. of this is kind of big. When they turn off the generator that first time, you you see that cafeteria, the screen, yeah. flickers, and then all of a sudden you see a beautiful daytime lush view, which now is another big monkey wrench in the plan. But that answers two things. Does it answer anything? It does. One thing I believe it answers is that it is lush outside, and then there is a filter that is going over in front of the screen to cover it up. Or is that what they're showing people in when they put their helmet on? But why would that feed go directly into the actual silo itself? That doesn't make any sense. Because they're turning off all powers. Maybe it's a glitch. Because, because if that's quote unquote nighttime for them, why was it daytime? Well, that would be number two. Thing? That's a weird, or maybe their 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 day and nights because they're all on the ground is not synced. That's what I was saying. Number two Could would be, be that their time is like relevant to what's actually happening upstairs. Yeah, like, but after because they use artificial after 140 light. 140 years. Yeah, they're a off. second has moved over a little bit, <laughs> so they're not exactly lined up anymore. They forgot about you know the leap year and yeah. <laughs> whatever the case is. But I think it does. But at this point, I agree with you. Oh, sorry to cut you off. At no, this no. point, if you're going to go on the side, which side of the fence are you leaning on is that it's 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 fl- it's nice outside. I'm going that Like route. it's safe. Right? Yeah. As of this episode, we're saying it, you have to agree with that, right? What we should have done, what we should have done, mm-hmm. maybe we should go back after this episode before we watch the next episode, yeah. is uh, we should have actually paused it if we could fast mm-hmm. enough to see if the bodies that are actually out there disappear. Ooh. I don't think there's bodies out there. I, I would have noticed. You would have noticed that. It's, it's a really fast flash. I paused it. You, know, you did? The, yeah. Okay. The, the, and the first time I watched, it, I didn't. I didn't see it. So let's 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 get a little uh, speculate a little fast. Uh, Go ahead. Bit. So that means that it is lush outside. That means mm-hmm. that the feed that's being sent inside is somewhat being manipulated. Yeah. By whatever some advanced computer that they have or yeah deep it fake. Doesn't have to be a advanced whatever computer. It is, whatever yeah. it is. So is it possible that the mayor and his wife and all the other people that have ever been sent out there... Sheriff and his wife. I'm sorry, yeah, the sheriff and his wife, everyone that's been sent out there actually survived? Yeah, there's definitely a possibility of that. That'd be interesting. Like, then you, 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 have up, to, uh, you have to... You kind of have to as, uh, assume that they are alive. Uh, unless, well, not that they're all alive. No. we let, Backtrack. Baby Holston might be still alive because he took his helmet off. The others, they might be dead because they were getting gassed. Because remember, there's is it green outside, and are they getting gassed, or are mm-hmm. they not getting gassed? Right, right. There, I mean, there's there's two levels to this. Are they being killed, or are they not being killed? And is it green outside, or is it poison outside? If it's green outside, and they are, and they are, you know, we saw Holston acting like he was getting poisoned. Right. It's that backpack they have is poisoning him, but he took his helmet off. You ever watch the Truman Show? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what if this is actually like a giant Truman Show thing? Oh, it's like Survivor, and then these people are getting voted off? No, no, no. Like, oh, it's no. the Truman Show where this is just being broadcast oh, on television. Oh, for the television. world, for and the everybody's world. watching? It's, it's an ongoing show for 140 years. It's the longest right? broadcast. So on the other side of that hill that they're trying <laughs> to climb production. over, it's just a city. Yeah, that'll... and this is just a production site, and then people yeah. just watch. And just, like, because that would be cool. That because would people be out got there. T- people got tired of picking Apple Plus or Disney Plus, whatever oh. the case, trying to find a show. They're just like, let's just watch this whole community, yeah, like ants, yeah, and see what they what happens. Like ants, how I they, like that. How they thrive, how they fail. Why not? We've seen crazy things in in, in, in Hollywood. Was it New Heart show like all a dream or something? Right. So it, it has happened where things things are completely you know the lost. They were in purgatory. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that they could do. Right. They're all they're all over the yeah. place. So so I would say that that's definitely worth something. But you have to assume if anybody's alive, it would be Holston. Yeah. Could still be alive. I think it's a possibility. Maybe the wife is though too. I feel like, but it, she still had her helmet on and she could have maybe away. took it off before. Like maybe she, which, I don't know. Well, here's the other thing. Maybe they take the bodies away, too. If it is, let's say it is green out there and they're poisoning these people. The reason the bodies are not there is, you know, whoever is behind all this, they go and they take the bodies away. Yeah. I mean. Filter. Filter it out. Because especially, and there's got to be a way to pause it because, look, 
they're not showing any wind or really movement or anything that's really out there right yeah. now, right? So if you have these bodies, this is getting so nerdy, it's insane, but at some point you can just pause the feed, right? What do you mean pause the feed? Oh, the feed that everybody's looking at? The feed that everyone's looking at. You basically yeah. make a printing of it or something like that. You pull off, pull away your bodies and everything, and then you just move on to the next feed. I, this, you don't have to do all that. I just, I need them to explain it's a it. Fake, it's a fake thing. It's a fake it, thing. It's a fake thing. It's so, a fake but as of right now, it's leaning strongly that it is still green out there. I think it is. And a lot of, uh, there were some people who saw it and they kind of like, you know, they looked at they each other and like, did we just see what we saw? Because right? they don't even know what the color green looks like. <laughs> but but I think later know, it's, this is gonna spear some some conspiracy theories. Oh totally, right? I mean, hopefully, hopefully people, hopefully it's not just blown, you know, just blown off like it was with the birth control thing put inside. Um, yeah, uh, what's your name? But isn't this what this caused the rebellion back? You know, 140 years ago, some people wanted to go outside. They believed, you know, oh yeah, was it? so want to go may, outside. Yeah, maybe this can spear another, you know, rebellion or, or, kind of thing. Or now we can go back to maybe this is what judicial does. They have the filter on it mm -hmm. because things actually are green outside. Yeah, but it's still poisonous outside. Oh, that could be. That could be. So because if things look so lush outside, people want to go outside. So if you make it seem like it's a dead world, people aren't going to want. You know to see what? It. That's a good take. But too. if you also take away the camera feed completely, people start to get a little crazy because then there's only just what's inside and not what's outside. That's a, so that that's could be something that's laid point. into later. That, that that why not it could it could be that i mean there's so many different iterations of this that could be true but we'll see but as of right now i'm with you it's probably lush out there all right let's uh let's go back to so they end up fixing the generator mm -hmm. it's uh, juliet's plan along with everyone else there um, while they were fixing it the mayor and deputy marns hey, hey. they have their they have their kiss the the that sexual tension that's been thriving for these three episodes has finally come to <laughs> flourishion, and we got to actually see the kiss we've all been waiting for. Yeah, it was not awkward at all. No, I mean you. You <laughs> saw uh, there was one scene where he was drawing her when they were in the deputy yeah. place, and he obviously had a, a crush on her, and vice versa. Turns out it was mutual. Yeah, it was mutual. So yeah. they're they're gonna make their little plans for their future. Yeah. Well, the um, until. Well, doom, doom, doom. We'll get there. So Juliet saves the day. The generator has been repaired. She stops off over at um oh Walker's Walker's place. She says her goodbyes, and then she goes to take the you know the many steps to walk up to where her new job is going to be. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at the mayor's you, office, you think she's going to stop off and see our friend um, Ian Glenn, her father, aka Teen Titans Batman. AKA Jura Marmoth from uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't think she does. I think she yeah. just goes right she by. Just him. goes right by. Yeah, him, right? I think so. Damn, I, that's a. Bad I think maybe man. she would have stopped, but if it's no, like, for what happens so. at the end of this episode, I think for some reason she's just gonna have to get to work pretty quick. And then we see the mayor go to the bath. Like she looks like she's not feeling well after yeah, she, she just, after she just signed something. So we don't see her drink any. Do we ever see her drink anything or eat anything? I don't think. Yeah, we do. the whole time they're walking up, that she's drinking out of his uh, book bag. Oh, she's drinking out of this book bag the whole time. And remember, in the beginning, you know, she's um, he, he's he doesn't drink because her her water bottle has a hole, and he's drinking. And they had lunch. She didn't eat the strawberry. Right, right. So it's either at lunch or the water bottle. I think it's the water bottle. I and think then you're right. she, she signs off making Juliet the mayor. It's the last thing she no, does. Not the mayor, the, 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 uh, the sheriff. sheriff. Right. And then, you know, she goes to the bathroom and he's picking out wine because they're about to have a good time. <laughs> he's like, I think we need, do you think we, we need, need two, two bottles? Man. We need two bottles? He's like, let's make sure about this. <laughs> yeah. You know? And she uh, looks like she, she was she's poisoned. poisoned. She's laying on the floor when he, he or she, he hears a thump. He tries to get into the bathroom. He breaks it down, and he finds the mayor on the floor, blood coming out of her mouth. She's still, kind of, she's still kind of alive, but I'm pretty sure she's going to be dead the next episode. So I oh, think she's that's done. yeah. There was so, blood everywhere. Like yeah. it was already, you know, uh, like uh, I thought she was a great character, a great mayor. She's I loved her, done. but you know what? It's interesting. So far in this show, like if you kill, you kill off the mayor. Mm -hmm. You've killed off the sheriff. You've killed off uh, the sheriff's wife. Like you're just. Going through all the main characters pretty quickly so far. Hey, and just Game of in... Thrones made this popular, right? Killing off main characters, you know. Yeah, that's like the there. end of the first season. You're killing yeah, off people. The like people, the... <laughs> people off left and right. 
No, I like the mayor. So that 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 does suck. So it's interesting to see now who the next mayor is going to be. So now think about this. They were so worried, especially Tim Robbins' character um, Bernard, about a sh- replacing a sheriff. I think he said it was like every hour is one percentage of, of, towards chaos. Right. If what? that's for the sheriff, imagine now a mayor. Yeah. Now replacing a mayor, how long? You know, are they going to do it like? Within an hour, like, you know, the president, you know, God forbid something happens to the president. They're swearing in the vice president, like, immediately. They're going to have some kind of a government system where an intern is going to come in and fill in the role until someone else gets elected. Yeah, like, right away. Yeah, I would think so. they're so afraid of, you know, this, uh, of another uprising. Right. Quote, unquote, right? So, uh, it, it, it's kind of messed up. So, do you think it's judicial killed her? Yeah, I totally do. I think judicial killed her because she's not falling in line. Not falling. Yeah, I totally agree. There's yeah. no other. There's no other explanation. No, because like she's been spitting in their face for like two days now. Like pretty much, and and she's showing that she's defiant, and she's kind of she's an older politician. So they're probably like, you know what? If she's gonna end her term not playing along, right. She can end her term right now. Now I don't think this is who it is, but uh, Tim Robbins uh, mm-hmm. Becker, the yeah. name, he was pretty upset because remember there is an altercation Bernard. again. Bernard, mm-hmm. there is an altercation again as she's going back up, and they get to her that he stops. She stops at her Ooh. at his floor yeah. to drink some water, and go. he kind of comes rushing at her a little bit, upset yeah. that the pick is going to be Juliet. How did he and find out so quick? Too? She asked him that, like, how did you know already? And he doesn't answer her. He just kind of just go, he just basically says that she's a thief. You're going to regret this. I don't, I don't know if he, I don't think he says regret this. I don't think he does threaten her, but it, he was very adamant that he didn't like her yeah. from the very beginning. And it's also kind of weird that he knew exactly who she was. Yeah. When he meant, when she mentioned, cause she said he, she stole tape, like some heat tape for her servers. That's why. For his servers. Yeah. Because it stops his stuff from melting. Yeah. But she she probably needed for melting the silo thing, whatever, the turbine. Maybe. Maybe there's an explanation that comes up at some point. So Or or maybe maybe what's his name? Um what's is George George needed it for his uh his spelunking, you know, in the back cave. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> But yeah, but there's yeah, I would say judicial and then Bernard are are high up on there for sure. I would yeah, for sure. You know? She's not playing along, like you said. She's not. And th- it's gonna come to bite her. So that's another And that- think about oh uh, one more thing. She allowed for them to turn off the damn generator. Like she's being she's going rogue here. She's going outside that is true, the box. Because that, big that time. is actually what he he came up to her and said that he was mad about as well, is like why the power power yeah. shut down. She says that she okayed it. Yeah, so she's she's turned off the generator. She's hiring a mechanic to be the sheriff, right? Who happened to be a thief. Like she's gone rogue quite a bit in the last two days. That I can see why judicial or Bernard would you know, right? Take her out. And then keep in mind if um, uh, if Allison, which if if her theory was correct, or Al, or the or the um, the what's the baby lady's name again? Her baby lady. In the beginning, in the first episode, the one that's talking to Allison, like uh, the midwife. Oh, the midwife. If the midwife the is hippie right, midwife. Yeah, if the hippie <laughs> midwife is right, and judicial doesn't want people with thought to have babies. Yeah. So they're pretty. If they're going to go that extreme as far as making now, sure those people can't actually have, yeah, if the mayor's stuff. going rogue, we need to eliminate that immediately. So Gloria was her name. Yeah. So they are judicial. If it is judicial, they're they. They're okay with taking extreme measures to obviously get what they think, what they get, what they want. Yeah. Whether it, if it, if they think it's the benefit for the silo itself, or if it just benefits them, we don't know that yet. Yeah. So you know, more episodes. Hopefully, we'll get more answers. Do you think there's another party? Like you know how we have the three parts of our government? Uh, do you think it's it's enough to just have you know judicial and the sheriffs? Is you know because it looks like the sheriffs in line with the mayor really. Right, and like, then the yeah. judge and judicial are in line, and then the only other big faction we see is mechanical, which have no political influence really, but are really like, in control you think, of everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> think about it. That's it. Yeah. If you don't, believe- one rogue mechanic can shut the yeah. whole thing down. The nuke will be pressed, and we're all done. <laughs> we're all done. Yeah. Yeah, but don't you think it's like there's no there's no tiebreaker? Shouldn't there be like one more tiebreaker, like a president or something? Maybe there is another person. Maybe there's another faction that we don't even know about. We yet don't know about that's right? like yeah. in the shadows. Yeah, because it's it because it seems like the mayor's office and the sheriffs don't you know aren't always in line with the judge and judicial. So who's the tiebreaker? 
we'll have to keep watching. Yeah. All right. I think this is a good point to stop. Yeah, you came uh, in with we came with you came with some good uh, takes today, man. What? The ant farm one and the uh, the it's green outside but still poisonous. Quote it. Quote those, it. Those are, those I are solid. Say, I would say post it, but we're a little behind. Anyways, <laughs> uh, once again, if you've made it this far in the episode, that means you either like what you're hearing or you fell asleep or you're a friend of ours. Either way, please support us. Go over to that Patreon page and uh, send us some love. Send us some uh, some moolah. Help us buy some coffee. Get a new coffee maker. Keep the lights on. Support the studio. However you want to do it, it does not matter. But if you don't have any money, that's Okay. Just uh, click the follow, the like, the subscribe button, share it with your friends, share it like a virus, share it like it's some fun guy from The Last of Us. Either way, we will really appreciate it. Head over to that Patreon page and send us some love. Max, anything else? That's it. All right. We'll catch you next time. We are The Extremists. Episode four of Silo will be coming soon. Stay frosty. Music composed by Kyle Torme. Subscribe to the Extremist Podcast feed at rotcherbrainmedia.com slash the extremist. Subscribe to Rotcher Brain Media feed at rotcherbrainmedia.com and support Rotcher Brain Media by visiting patreon.com slash rotcherbrainmedia.com.